Hello, welcome to another episode of The Revisionists, where we look at technology companies that are changing, disrupting, and innovating the media ecosystem. I'm here today with the founder of Newton Research, John Hochter. John, thanks for joining. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you, Jason. So let's dive right in. What is Newton Research? Sure. Um, Newton Research, uh, we've built a platform called Newton. And that platform is a team of highly specialized AI agents that our customers can embed into really every stage of the media workflow from planning and targeting to buying, to optimization, to reporting. Uh, these agents that we've built, uh, they're not like generic chatbots or, you know, like open-ended co-pilots. Our agents are trained specifically on the workflows and the data sets um, and, and like the decision patterns that are unique to media and marketing. How did you think of this? Like, how did this come about? It's really based upon just being in this industry for the past, you know, 26 years. Uh, so my co-founder, Matt, and I have worked together for 26 years uninterrupted. Uh, our prior company was called Data Plus Math. We did a lot of measurement and reporting, especially across linear and CTV. And then uh, we had a couple other companies in the space prior to that that we worked at. Um, and what I've learned over multiple decades uh, is that every company wishes they had more data analysts and more data scientists. And we saw the potential to use AI agents to help make sophisticated measurement more accessible to our industry. Um, and uh, as you know, the reality is that the complexity of media placement is growing exponentially uh, with more and more data sources. Data sources seem to be multiplying every day, uh, more kind of expectations from a campaign. And uh, when we saw the advancements in AI, we kind of knew there had to be a better way you know, one that wasn't just like bolting on automation, but actually leveraging AI to augment uh, human capability through these uh, intelligent AI agents. So there's, uh, I've got to ask a follow up to that. So yeah. there's like a trillion dollars going into the AI industry right now. And there's, you know, everybody's got an agent that they're making and creating on their own. So how do you, I mean, how do you build a moat? How do you differentiate? How do you uh, compete against, you know, things, other agents that are out of the box or something that yeah. uh, Wiz can do for their own company? So, yeah, it's a great question. Um, and in the age of AI, I think moats are being redefined. <laughs> a lot of companies that thought they had moats don't quite have a moat anymore. Uh, but what I see as key is having an industry specific focus. Uh, there's a lot of general purpose AI tools that are wonderful. You know, Gemini, ChatGPT, Claude, you know, all of them can write code. They can answer, you know, broad questions. Uh, but when you try to use them to do something that's specific to marketing, advertising, or media, uh, they really struggle to generate analytics that actually ref like reflect how customers respond to media in the real world, right? You know. You could ask Claude to build a media mix model um, or to run a lift test. And, you know, Claude's going to respond. It's going to return a wall of code. But if you've tried that, you know that the output is often really brittle. <laughs> it's disconnected from the real world of, you know, the campaign dynamics, which our industry lives with. Um, and it's unlikely that that code is going to be predictive in any meaningful way. So it's really the specialization that we view as the moat. So is it training and training and training, or is it, is you, are you That's right. building special uh, software into the, into the product or how, how does it work? I should ask. Yeah. So um, we're constantly teaching Newton new skills and methodologies. Um, I like analogies. So I, I make the analogy that, uh, we're trying to provide the media analytics handbook to our agents. Um, I also like to compare it to trying to give our agents a master's in marketing science. Yeah. So they're constantly learning new methodologies, 
uh, new ways of problem solving, new problem solving recipes, so that when you ask Newton to help you uh, set up an incrementality test, it knows what you're talking about, unlike the generic chatbots. And it has a bunch of examples to pull from, and it can look at the data and the campaign and figure out what's the right methodology to apply, rather than leaving that to a generic chatbot that's been trained on the open internet. Yeah. So how do you, just to follow up to that, like, are you using data from the open web? Are you using proprietary data? Like, and, and if I'm, if I'm, a, and maybe you could also include like who you, who you're focused on from a customer perspective. Yeah. How are you, how are you ensuring the confidential confidentiality, the security that if I'm a customer, I'm not turning over my data so that it gets, it's yeah. helping these other platforms. <clears throat> yeah. Great question. I love that question. Cause, uh, we built it specifically for, um, to be applicable to large brands, large publishers, large agencies, uh, folks who don't want to share their know-how with their competitors. Uh, so one, Newton's a containerized application. We put Newton where the data lives and there's zero movement of data outside of our customer's environment. And that's, that is a lot of good things that come along with it, um, from privacy to compliance, all of those things are, it really helps us get deployment with these large brands, large agencies, large publishers. Um, two, <clears throat> we don't learn from our customers to take to their competitors, but our customers can teach Newton things. And they're basically creating their own proprietary knowledge base within their implementation of Newton. And that lives local in their environment. It doesn't get mixed with the knowledge that we've taught to Newton. So I liken it to on the job training, you know, to use another analogy, right. if you're going to deploy these intelligent agents, you want them to be as productive as possible and you want them to do things your way. So when our agents are deployed, they show up knowing a lot about the industry, having a lot of background. I like to compare it to having like maybe seven or eight years of data science experience in the industry. So super useful right out of the gate, but you can teach it new things. You could show it your data science notebooks, your team probably has Jupyter notebooks, or they have scripts. You can show that to Newton and feel comfortable that it's not going back to Newton research. It's not getting, you know, it's not getting put into our algorithms or into our knowledge base. All of that stays in your knowledge base, in your implementation of Newton, in your environment. Right. So it's, I guess from a business, your business standpoint, it's super sticky because you're not having to spend money on data, acquiring mm -hmm. the data. It's utilizing their data. And then for them, they're training an employee that's not going to leave or take vacation or right. Like, like complain yeah, it's, and come and hung over. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Newton has never come and hung over. Yeah. And the other thing is Newton's really like an extension of their team and it's a tool that their team uses. So, um, it makes the people who work there more productive. And the, the thing that we saw, um, being in the industry for so long, like these teams are massively overworked. When we show up and we show these data science and analytics teams a demo of Newton, um, they love what they see because one, they've been asked to try to leverage AI. Two, they've probably tried to use ChatGPT, Claude, or Gemini out of the box. And it's a really hard proposition to get them to do things the way that you want them to do that. Um, and so we show up with agents that are actually trained on the industry, think like they think, uh, and they can teach it stuff. And so it really helps make them more productive and get more done. And so we don't see, um, Newton as replacing people. We really see it as helping people do more analytics. Uh, and I think the other truth of our industry is nobody's doing enough analytics with all, with the explosion of data, um, you can infuse data and analytics into so much more of the media workflow and these agents help you do that. So, uh, last question, and it's kind of a two part question. Um, I have to ask how you, you think it can impact television, but I also mm -hmm. curious about from a, from a customer perspective, uh, any good, any good examples, um, in and around the media television ecosystem, like what, what do you see this having from an impact perspective? Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love the television industry. You know, that that's where I've 
spent the majority of my career. Um, and so we think about the TV industry a lot and we work with a bunch of the, uh, the constituents. And what gets me excited is that when you deploy our agents, you have the ability to do what I call predictive media modeling rather than just measurement. Um, and like I spent a lot of time in the measurement side um, and measurement's awesome. But measurement really is about uh, looking at the past and telling you what happened. And when you've got agents that are trained on how to do these analytics and you can get those analytics in a very timely manner, you can infuse those analytics into your decision-making and you can actively shape what's happening next. So we're seeing that happen in real time with our customers as they get more and more comfortable with our agents, they're infusing them into more and more of those media workflows. And so helping to figure out not just did I do well with that last campaign, but measure it while it's in flight and actually respond to that measurement and power you know, the next decision. Will it be like the battle of the bots eventually where you know, you've got, it's going into a media ecosystem that's powered by AI that says they're already doing optimization. And that you're like, I wonder how that stuff will work itself out. I guess we'll figure that out in, in due time, but. Yes, well, maybe it'll be the cooperation of the bots. Um, you know, there's a lot of protocols that have emerged, you know, two at the forefront, you know, MCP and agent to agent. Um, I see a world where our industry can implement protocols like that. Maybe those are maybe the next that are going to come out, you know, in the, over the coming months in order to really build an ecosystem that works for everyone. Uh, I think there's an opportunity for the industry to not create yet another monopoly or another walled garden by leveraging those protocols and having agents that actually interoperate um, in order to kind of get it right this time rather than maybe repeat some of the mistakes we've made in the past. Cool. John, I could talk to you about this for a long time. I appreciate you taking the time. Any last things we didn't get to cover? Anything we might have left out? No, just thank you very much for the opportunity to tell our story. Yeah, of course. Uh, congratulations and, and uh, wish you all the luck in the future. Thank you, Jason. Take care.